Laurie, Adam, one of our Search for Scratch subscribers. Mm. He plays off 10, wants to get to five. Right, so he wants to halve his handicap. Yep. He wants to halve, which is pretty good. Mm. And he's full of self-doubt. Now, you deal with a lot of elite amateurs and professional players. Do. What would you recommend? It's a very common thing, um, Adam. There, there are a lot of players feel just like you feel. So they stand over a golf shot and they're you know, fearful of where it's going. What we tend to do to start with, you know, when we're working with elite players, is we analyze the pre-shot routine. We analyze the time behind the ball and into the ball, and we, we look at whether that gap time is a, a, an extended time or a shorter time. What the research shows on that is the shorter is better, that if you spend less time behind the ball, make a quicker decision, and then execute, you'll get better results than if the time is longer. It sounds to me like from what you said when you sent through, you said that you play better on your own, in that situation, you haven't got anybody pushing you from behind. You feel like you've got all the time in the world to hit the shots. However, if you're playing with friends and so on, and let's just say, and I don't know, and, Ad, and, and Andrew doesn't know, but let's say your routine is 20 seconds long, you know, uh, from the walk in to hitting the shot. Uh, I would suggest to you that if I was working with you, that we would shorten that by half. Like you want to halve your handicap, then I would say we want to halve the amount of time it takes for you to make a decision and execute a shot. What do you reckon? Well, I think the key there is what, what I'm hearing is time, right? Yeah. He's got too much time to think. Mm. It brings up too much emotion in that time. Yeah. And that's what's causing him to focus on things he doesn't want or he doubts his ability. Yeah. Um, so I feel if he was to cut it to 10 seconds maybe, mm. if we're assuming it's a 20 second routine. Something like that, yeah. Uh, the other thing he mentions is he wants to trust himself more. So really that's just a committing to a shot process. It's the same it? thing though. You're like If you've got more time, to, you get more doubt, right? So if you stretch the timeline out, more stuff can come in that you don't want, right? So if you reduce that timeline and you go, right, what is it I'm doing here? Well, I want to hit this seven iron to the middle of that green. There's a palm tree behind the green there and I want to hit it there, and I've only got enough time to walk in and do that, right? Mm. Rather than, I'm standing over the shot and I get this feeling in me, oh, this could go right, or boy, don't go over there to the left, and all of those normal feelings that good players have and, and, and uh, more average players have yeah. as well. Well, everyone has it, and I think, like you said, if you can shorten the time, commit to the process, Yeah. I know it's hard, easier said than done, but just, I guess, commit to that as a process in its own right. Shorten the time, yeah. commit to the process once you've made your decision, and forget about all other outcomes. And then obviously, like we've talked about in other videos, just accept the outcome. It is what it is. Yeah. Bag, club and bag, move on. And then recommit to the process again once you get to the ball. So one way of doing that, really simple way, is when you're out playing on the golf course, get your friends to get their phone out and time from the walk-in. So the, move, the minute, the, the second rather, that you move towards the shot from behind the ball, they, they click the, the timer and when you hit the shot and the club finishes over the shoulder, you click it again. Now get them to film, uh, to, to time you on five, six, seven random swings on different parts and then have a look at it. You're probably going to see this, A, that you've got a routine that's longer than 15 seconds, number one. Number two, that the variation in time between the routines is not consistent. The best in the world, the best players in the world are down to about a second, inside a second from one routine to the next. The higher the handicaps, and I've been testing this for years, the bigger the range. So you get, you know, one, one swing, Andrew, is like uh, 14 seconds. The next swing is 18 seconds, and it's like that. Mm. So there's all this time that's, that we've got to account for. So tightening the timeline, definitely going to help you in your case. Well, Adam, we hope that helps. Uh, if you need anything else, obviously send us some feedback. We'd love to hear how you go, and good luck with it. Well, there it is. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember to share any questions in the comments below and feel free to share this video with your golfing friends. We want to help you easily and effortlessly lower your handicap by four shots or more. So we want to invite you to join our Search for Scratch program, which we've designed to help you find out how good a golfer you can become if you are trained with the best coaching model, practice plan and course management system, all whilst developing a champion golfer's mindset. For more information and to become another one of our success stories, visit searchforscratch.tv forward slash search for scratch program or click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, commenting and sharing this video guys. We look forward to supporting your golf improvement in the search for scratch program.